My name is Ralph Kiona. I work for the Aquanation Fisheries. Not only do I work with the fisheries program, we work with our tribal people as a traditional cook. And fish is one of the important things that we use in our ceremonies, for our funerals, for our first foods. And to, to help the fish survive would be a great deal for our people. So this alder here has remnants of several different years of flagging, marking steelhead reds. And this is often what we see down in White Creek is that where we see reds are on the sides of the channel. So gravel accumulating right up against the bank. And that becomes high and dry really quickly. So less chance of survival for the young that come out of those reds. And then if we look at the gravel in the channel, it's much more armored, very hard, less than ideal for digging in and establishing reds. So the, the project scope is to treat about four miles total stream length, about two miles on White Creek and two miles on Brush Creek. And we've staged uh, close to 500 trees that we plan to place. We've staged these trees at nine landings along the canyon rim, basically separated by a quarter mile or so, and in close proximity to where they're gonna go in streams. The big moment uh, will be when a Chinook helicopter comes and begins to start picking these pieces up off the landing and flying them down into the canyon that's immediately adjacent to our west. So the helicopter, uh, while it's very expensive on a per hour rate, it's uh, incredibly efficient. So we're able to treat a fairly large spatial scale, uh, what is four miles, in a total of 14 hours. So it's efficient both from, from time as well as um, placement. There will be no heavy equipment, big yellow machines down in the stream canyon, but instead this wood will just uh, be loosely placed. So while it, it may seem odd to be in the Pacific Northwest and talk about needing to fly wood back into streams because there's a lack of wood, uh, really throughout the Northwest over the last hundred years as a result of uh, both logging practices, road building, undersized culverts associated with those, uh, we've made for a flashier system, systems that have bigger peak flows and in a sense without having that structure or wood in stream to hold back some of those flows, uh, we get scouring and basically we end up with habitat that is simplified. There's, there's less wood, there's larger rock, less diversity. And so when we talk about restoring wood into a system and restoring processes to aid fish, what we're talking about is really interrupting the flow. So creating breaks in the velocity. What we see as one of the primary limiting factors uh, for steelhead recovery in the Klickitat Basin and for many east side streams is having enough over submarine habitat. So ideally when we come back in a couple years, we'd see a nice accumulation of spawning gravel here at the pool tail out, and then a pool immediately upstream with good habitat complexity. Lots of cover and macroinvertebrates in very close proximity to where those fish came out of the gravel. When I first come to Yakima Nation Fisheries, they told me that the project is not to work for today, but to work for the generations to come. 
And for us to be doing this kind of work today, in seven years, it'll enhance for the kids, maybe to catch more fish farther upstream. Seeing more fish farther up on the reservation is exciting that, so that they keep on repopulating our two streams here and, and further down the road we'll have a lot more fish. And, it, and that, that's exciting to see a young person catch a fish. Big old smiles.